I'm Stepping Stone Fight Hack.com here with my guy Andre Rosier, one of the best trainers in the world. How you feeling? What the deal? What the deal? What the deal, nephew? Happy after Easter. Same to you, brother. <laughs> you know, another day, another dollar, man. So let's jump right into it. A uh, pretty great card, I think, um, this past weekend. Um, what were your thoughts on um, the way things played out between Roley and um, Pitbull Cruz? Now, I know you were picking Pitbull beforehand. Right. Um, basically, what I picked actually came to fruition. Mm. Um, I like Roley, too. Roley is a character, but this is boxing. Yeah. And Pitbull was ready. He, 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 brought the, he brought the ruckus. He brought the heat. Uh, pressure breaks pipes, and um, Roley couldn't uh, withstand the forces that be. But were you surprised how dominant Pitbull was? Because even, I think a few minutes before the fight, Javante went on Twitter, and he said he was expecting Roley to knock Pitbull out, and that clearly did not happen. So were you surprised that it was that easy? No, actually, I wasn't. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Pitbulls. He's tough. He, he He's disciplined. He's focused, and... He wasn't all with the rah-rah of what was going on for the uh, pre-fight build-up. Yep. And he came to win. And he did win in, in quite destructive fashion. I was truly impressed. Does anything change between him and a Javante Davis rematch? I think it was still... I mean, I'm a Javante guy all through and through. Mm -hmm. you know, nephew is 100%. I, I enjoy everything. That he does in the ring, and I, I still think he will be victorious. But um, Pitbull is on a different plane right now. He's a world champion. That changes the dynamics big time. So I think you would see a lot more excitement. But I still would think the results would be the same. 140 is outrageous right now. On like, fire. <laughs> if rank the four champs, we got Devin Haney, Cinefimo Lopez, Pitbull, and Sabriel Matias. Rank those four guys. Um, right now, I have to I have to go with um, Devin, To, Pitbull, and Sabrina. Mm. So you would put you would take Pitbull over Sabrina any day of the week. Any day, Sabrina any day. hit hard as hell, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the young man in, in his tenacity, but it's only tenacity. Mm. He walks into punches like um, canvas face Cambridge. I mean, it's it's not good. You ha you have to ward off at least one out of a hundred punches. You can't get hit with all a hundred of them because it's not going to be good down the line. So yes, that has to change. <laughs> that's some funny shit. <laughs> that's change, that's change. Um, where do you think um, Roley goes from here, man? Oh, that's a tough question. I don't know. He made a lot of changes. He changed his trainer, and which was in my opinion, the very wrong thing to do. Mm. And um, I don't know. He has a lot of uh, re reorganization thing to do. He has to refocus on his boxing ability, especially. I don't know. It's tough, nephew. He, I don't know what to say about Roley right now. I think he needs to take a moment off and, and get his head together and get back on track. Let's um, shift gears to the main event. Now, I know heading in, you was picking Zoo, but I'm not going to give you any, any shit about it because that cut on top of the head just would not stop bleeding. Man. Listen, nephew, let me mm -hmm. tell you something. Yep. If I was Zoo's trainer, mm -hmm. when that elbow hit his scalp mm -hmm. and the blood came down, I would have waited to the fourth round and called the fight. Mm -hmm. It made no sense, and as bad as it was, bleeding it, it was going to be a rough night mm -hmm. i would have said let's do this again mm -hmm. no harm no foul it wasn't intentional it wasn't intentional elbow yeah. and um he took the worst away for that and i would have said that's it we're done do you put most of the blame on zoo's team or do you put like zoo's team for not calling the fight before the fourth and for people that don't know if you have to go past the fourth round i believe in order for it to be a decision so if they were to stop it beforehand would have just been a no contest so do you give like zoo's corner should have been like yo let's stop it or do you look at the cut man like yo you you couldn't stop the bleeding at all not even a little bit well you know i mean i was i was really viewing the the area that he was cutting and the severity of the cut mm -hmm. 
And it would have been, I mean, there are cut men who can stop cuts, but sometimes a cut is really bad and, and it's being tagged constantly. It's in a bad place. And it, it's kind of difficult to say. I wouldn't put the onus of that entirely on the cut man, but his team, whoa, his team. I would have been like, this fight is over. We're going to get him again. This is ridiculous. It was an accident. Let's not further complicate the accident. Does Zoo deserve an immediate rematch, or would you like to see him go in like another direction? No, I think he deserves an immediate rematch. I mean, there's no reason to go in another direction. Go ahead, unless... It's a whole lot of money in another direction, and he can reap the rewards of financial uh, gains for it. I, I say go back, fight um, from there again, and uh, do what you were initially doing in the beginning of the fight. Granted, that would be, I think, maybe the right thing to do, but pretty sure you saw Errol Spence jumped into the ring. Semantics. <laughs> semantics. It, it always is in boxing. He, 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 semantics. <laughs> I mean, he had to do that, but rightfully speaking, there's a rematch clause. They were in there. This is their moment. Let them have their moment. Fair enough. But let's just say Zhu, because, I mean, he, he might not even be able to, to fight maybe for the rest of the year or maybe not until, like, the back half of the year because of that cut. So let's just say Spence does get in there. He fights Zhu next. I mean, fight some Fondora next. Do we have a new unified champion 154, or does Fondora take care of business against Spence? Well, I mean, we have to re realize also that Spence is coming off a very brutal loss. Mm -hmm. Very brutal. Yeah. And of course, there's been time for him to heal and everything else physically, but yeah. mentally, mentally, is he in that good place after that? loss after that very arduous very brutal loss to get back and be the Spence that everybody's accustomed to seeing that's a monumental question so would you favor Fondor right now or would you favor Spence I would have to favor Fondor he's a mm -hmm. champ now all, all respect dude and he's a two he's a unified champ he has two belts what do you think about I mean the, the biggest elephant in the room is Terrence freaking Crawford. <laughs> you know, he's the guy who kind of activated his mandatory. And he's just like, yeah, I got next. So how difficult of a fight is it going to be for Terrence to fight somebody who's just as tall as Anthony Joshua, about six five and a half, six six? How right. difficult is that fight going to be for Terrence Crawford now? Well, I mean, it's, it's Terrence Crawford can solve many puzzles. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's his... That's his um, capability that's his technical prowess and I think uh, he would he would definitely solve the puzzle eventually somewhere down the line uh, it's a tough fight though uh, Fender is not an easy fight you have to get close to him and uh, he's thinking a little bit sharper than he did before but what I was noticing in the fight is he still was getting caught with shots mm -hmm. he was getting caught with those ones and twos mm -hmm. those ones and twos from Crawford be a whole lot different. Were you were you impressed a little bit with his um, with his jab? Yeah, I mean he was utilizing it more. Of course, I'm impressed when anybody utilizes a jab because the jab is the key factor in controlling any type of environment in the ring. Yep. So I was happy to see him doing that. But but once again, um, I saw moments where he was getting caught with shots and guys that can clip a little bit more. Say it in, he took zoo shots very well also mm -hmm. but guys that can really clip a little or put together the punches more than just one might give him a um, big trouble let me ask you this on paper would you say that Fondora would be Crawford's most, most difficult test like you got Postal he fought a prime Gamboa I mean obviously spends um, Sean Porter um, Mean Machine like would you say Fondora would be like yeah well, you know, I would say Fondura would be the most awkwardly different test. Mm. Uh, he's had some very staunch tests. Sean Porter was a staunch test for him. Mm. Um, he's six foot six, long and lanky, and he's thinking a little bit better. Yeah. So I think it'd be different if, as to speculate on the difficulty of it. I'm not sure, but it would be different. 
but he's a problem solver. Crawford knows how to get the numbers in there to get the job done. So eventually, somewhere along the line, I think he would figure him out, and then he would get very explosive and start putting the pounding on him. Last question, actually. Do you see, let's just say Crawford gets the Fandor fight. He fights, uh, he, you know, let's say he, he wins both belts. Do you see Crawford sticking around and trying to become undisputed at 154? Or do you think he'll just be like, eh, I became a unified champ again. I'm going to sail off into the sunset now. Well, no, I think that his competitive edge would say, let's do this three times. Mm -hmm. A three-time undisputed champion is amazing. Now, he's already going in the Hall of Fame, yeah. but that would lament his legacy without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt, he would be one of the premier athletes. Mm -hmm. And that golden phrase of pound for pound, he'd be very high on the list. Thank you, Dre. Always appreciate you, man. Thank you. Without a doubt. Let's go, let's go. Canelo. <laughs> Bungia. Canelo. Fifth round knockout. That's a, <laughs> that's a little aggressive. <laughs> that's a little bit of an aggressive. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. This guy speaks Spanish now. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Dre. <laughs> no doubt. Having time all the time. Let's go.